How's everyone doing? Today I have a Blu-ray collection update with seven pickups. And if you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. And I haven't seen any of these except for half of one of them, which I'll explain uh, momentarily. But three of these are 4K Ultra HD titles. Uh, these are all new releases. One is actually a uh, early release, uh, not out yet. So look forward to that. I'll actually be talking about that uh, a little bit more in the future. Uh, but Let's get into it. First up is Elvis. I love that hollow foil slipcover. Beautiful. Let me know what your favorite Elvis song is. This is a biopic and it's directed by Baz Luhrmann. Let me know what your favorite Baz Luhrmann film is. He did uh, Romeo and Juliet back in the day with uh, John Leguizamo, Claire Danes, and then of course Leonardo DiCaprio and worked with Leo again on The Great, uh, Great Gatsby. He also worked on um, Moulin Rouge, he directed Moulin Rouge in Australia. Uh, a bunch of very beautiful shot films, uh, great set design and costume design. So I'm expecting that to be the case here. This also has Tom Hanks as Elvis's business manager. Uh, I'll be honest, the trailers didn't really appeal to me. He looked like an emo Elvis, uh, but I feel like I've just heard rave reviews for it. So I'm going to check this one out. It's 159 minutes, so it is lengthy, but it, again, it is a uh, Tom uh, Elvis biopic. So you'd expect something of that nature. Then the people involved, Baz Luhrmann, uh, a lot of his films are a little bit longer too. Um, so beautiful slipcover. Love the heck out of that. Uh, I'm hoping for good things. Uh, the lead guy is Austin Butler, who's playing uh, Elvis right there. But yeah, I've heard amazing things for this one. Trailer didn't do it for me though, but I'm going to keep an open mind. Next up is, uh, this is our Warner Brothers release. And uh, this one is a universal release. It's uh, Minions, The Rise of Gru, kind of like the origin story of Gru as a 12-year-old in uh, 1970s suburbia. Uh, so it looks like just a bunch of crazy, uh, over-the-top Minions action right here. Steve Carell doing the voice. Great voice work uh, in here, too. Uh, John claude Van Damme, Danny Trejo, Dolph Lundgren, Lucy Lawless. I had no idea. <laughs> Uh, but I know Taraji P. Henson, uh, there's a few other, Pierre Coffin does like the Minions, and uh, there's Julie Andrews, Alan Arkin, a bunch of great voice actors in here, and this has a, some bonus mini-movies, and a bunch of other bonus features right here. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice release from Universal. I do enjoy uh, the Despicable Me and Minions movies, the realm of them, they're fun characters, and it's always entertaining. Uh, it's one of those, like some of the ones, you know, they may not, uh, some of the sequels may not be as good as like the first uh, Despicable Me, but they're still entertaining to me and the characters especially. Uh, it's just uh, fun to see what they're going to do with them. And I, I feel like though they've done so many now, I, I don't know where they're going to go from here, uh, but I feel like there's always something if it's a popular franchise, which this is. And I do like the, the mini movies a lot too. Uh, so we've got Minion, The Rise of Gru, another Illumination uh, Presents uh, release right there. Another animated title is uh, Batman, The Long Halloween Deluxe Edition. Uh, I've seen, this is what I was talking about, I've seen part of. This is the only one that I've seen part of. It was essentially two movies, uh, Batman, The Long Halloween Part 1 and 2. I saw Part 1, which I, everybody raved about. I thought it was, you know, I, I didn't blow me away. I thought it was good, but not necessarily great for me. But I like a lot of these DC animated movies, I feel like their DC animated movies are better than their live action ones. They have some really great ones. Uh, and one that I always talk about uh, from Warner, this is another Warner Brothers release, they have uh, Mortal Kombat animated uh, films, which are great, especially Scorpion's Revenge, incredible. I'll take that over the, the live action one, the recent one anyways. Uh, but I haven't seen the second part of The Long Halloween. Uh, the first one, again, I everybody would seem, I would seem to be in the minority because everybody seemed to rave about it. It didn't blow me away. But you see, you know, a bunch of different characters here. Batman, James Gordon, Harvey Dent, uh, the Arkham Asylum, Poison Ivy, uh, Scarecrow, Mad Hatter, uh, Joker, and, you know, the different crime families. And it's about this holiday killer who's uh, offing some of the, the criminals and stuff. And they're trying to figure out who he is and get to the bottom of it. Um, but I love the cover art for that. And I'm um, looking forward to checking out the second part of this. And this is the first time it's all in one release like this. So it's part one and two now in one epic saga and includes an all new documentary as well. And this is 168 minutes. So essentially like the two movies again combined into the one. Um, next up is, let me know what your favorite uh, DC animated movie is and your favorite Batman villain. Next up is uh, from Lionsgate, uh, American Carnage. Uh, this sounds like it's gonna be like a political 
drama thriller. I heard that it's uh, kind of like a, a ripoff of Get Out in some aspects, where it's some uh, children of undocumented immigrants are, they basically have to get their, their, get their charges dropped. They have to volunteer uh, to help the elderly. And there's some conspiracy involved, and it says it's a, th a twisted thriller comedy. Uh, but I've heard that it's even that shot right there, kind of reminiscent of Get Out. Uh, but yeah, I didn't hear good things about this. I heard very negative reviews for it. But I do like some of the cast, especially uh, Jenna Ortega. I think is really talented. She looks like she's going to be great as a uh, Wednesday uh, Adams, and then you know Scream. I I pretty much liked everything that she's been in when she's a. Uh, uh, that I've seen uh, acting wise from her and uh, this guy too Jorge uh, Lindenberg Jr. Uh, I've seen him in a few things recently too and uh, looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, to me it, it sounds kind of intriguing. I'm gonna keep a fair open mind to it. I feel like a lot of times the criticism and negative reviews come from uh, not necessarily judging the film and maybe judging on an aspect that they get carried away with in their mind. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people using the term woke and, you know, the, you know, saying, oh, this is just too much of this, too much of that. It, it's not, though. It's you got to get with the times representation. It's here. Uh, it's just going to be standard like it should be already. Um, so I don't know. I feel like some of the reviews might have been, uh, you know, a little bit from a political standpoint and not necessarily on its own merit for the film, which is unfortunate. Next up is Bulletproof with Vinnie Jones. Let me know who your favorite Vinnie Jones or what your favorite Vinnie Jones movie is. Your favorite role from him. I think he's awesome as the tough guy. I always think of him for, uh, you know, one that I think is actually uh, Midnight Meat Train. I think is underrated as a horror movie, but he was awesome in that film. Uh, and then he was in, of course, um, Snatch and then Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Very similar right there, uh, Guy Ritchie. Uh, but I think he's just awesome as the tough guy. Here he plays a uh, mob boss called Temple. And there's this guy who... Uh, steals from him and then finds that uh, in his getaway car is his uh, temples, the mob boss's uh, pregnant girl right there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a girlfriend or or wife. Uh, I'm trying to see where it says wife. So Mia yeah, is her name. So he's coming after them with, uh, you know, his whole squad and uh, hitmen and bounty hunters and they have to fight to survive. Now, the thing that I thought was interesting is this is directed by uh, James Clayton and he's the lead actor, too. He's that character. Apparently, Vinnie Jones only has a small role in here, but he's on the front cover. He's on the back because, you know, he's the draw right here. He's the name recognition that you you see and you see his face. You just know who he is, even if you don't know his name. You know, he plays tough guys, bad guys, stuff like that. Um, so I think that's kind of misrepresentation a, a bit, but everybody does that. You know, they'll say from one director or one producer of this big movie, you know, uh, but I'm always weary when. Uh, a lead, like the director is also the lead actor, and also when they're not using like that shot, and instead they're using him, who apparently doesn't even have that big of a role in the film, from what I've heard, anyways. Uh, but this is another Lionsgate release, and uh, I like Vinnie Jones. He's done a lot of these, you know, direct to DV or direct to uh, video kind of films, and uh, I still enjoy them for what they are, action overload stuff. Uh, so I'm hoping for good things in that one. Next up is uh, Cave Rescue, and this is interesting because this movie is directed by uh, Tom Waller, and um, he directed uh, a movie called The Cave in 2019, which is a Thai movie. And uh, this is essentially a re-edited version of that movie, from what I've read, which is interesting. There's a bunch of these movies right now. Was 13 Lives is the big one from Ron Howard, uh, about uh, you know this uh, soccer team, boys soccer team, that were trapped in a cave in Thailand and uh, they have to rescue them. So there's a, a few of these films about this one uh, true story coming out right now. I think it's they're all trying to capitalize, and maybe the fact that Ron Howard's one is the big one, that these other ones are coming out, this re-edited version is uh, surfacing now. Uh, so it sounds like it's going to be thrilling and, uh, you know, interesting, and uh, I don't know too much about the story, actually, so, uh, but I feel like there's the market is oversaturated with this story, uh, movie wise. So I'm um, hoping for good things from this one. This is again a Lionsgate release and nice slip cover on this one. I do like that shot. It's very eye catching and appealing. I would definitely, uh, you know, be intrigued from that uh, if I wasn't already aware of what the film was about. Uh, next up is They Crawl Beneath. This is a Wellgo USA title. I will be doing a giveaway for this one coming up soon, probably in like um, two weeks. 
And uh, yeah, this one comes out, um, I think, around two weeks. I want to say October 4th, maybe. So that's when I'll be doing the giveaway for it. But this, to me, I saw the trailers for it, and it looks like it's going to be uh, very similar to Tremors. Uh, it's If you can see that right there, Creature looks very much like Tremors to me. And it's basically about this guy who, uh, there's an earthquake, and he's working in a car, and he gets trapped underneath the car, and then these creatures come out, and he has to fight to survive. Uh, and I know uh, Michael uh, Paré is in here, but like briefly, in the trailer, they show what happens to him. So it sounds like he's not going to be in there. At least that's what it appears from the trailer. Uh, so, but to me, I, I love Tremors and I feel like a lot of the sequels are terrible for them. So maybe this will be kind of like a, a different take, not necessarily in that same realm, but very unique creature effects for it. And uh, I don't know, I'm curious for this one. I'm looking forward to checking it out and hopefully it will be good. I will say from the trailer, the creature effects look great. Uh, very similar to uh, Tremors. So uh, at least for like the little, the snake part that come out, uh, from the Graboid's mouth. But, uh, there we go. They crawl beneath. I'm always looking for more, uh, horror movies to check out. Horror is my favorite genre by far, but I always ramp it up, uh, during October spooky season, uh, 31 days of Halloween, 31 days of horror, whatever you want to call it. I definitely want to do, again, I'm going to try to do a video every day in October. I don't know if I'll be able to. Then it'll culminate on my channel with the, the movie community collaboration video I do every year on here. You know, asking what movie scared you the most and getting other people involved and uh you know i think it's a fun time to do to do a big collaboration like that with a bunch of different uh youtubers and content creators on here so i uh, look forward to that and look forward to the giveaway as well and uh there we go let me know what your favorite biopic is too for me probably like raging bull that's a classic for me but there's some great ones out there uh let me know what your favorite modern animated movie is and uh your favorite uh, underrated action movie, actually. Don't give me, like, John Wick or The Raid. Uh, those ones are ones that everybody knows. Give me some lesser-known, underrated ones. And uh, your favorite recent horror movie in the past couple years. So there you go. Let me know if you've seen them, what you think of them. Let me know which one is your favorite. And let me know your uh, responses to all the questions. I like the interaction on here. Uh, and hope everybody's doing well. Take care.